Uh, so quick addendum. So we saw the uh, basically the free energy or the phase diagram for mixing for uh, basically polymer solutions as a function of T. You could also basically invert this uh, curve and plot it as a function of chi or chi n. So again, you can kind of see these, and it's just the, the same inverted curve. So at low values of chi, what does that mean? So chi is proportional, inversely proportional to 1 over t. So if chi is low, we also know that from our expression that chi is equal to uh, z over t of epsilon 1, 2 minus half epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2, 2. That was messy, I know that. But you could look back to the notes. So if our chi is low, it's saying that uh, basically that e12 is not too bad. So if chi is extremely high, it means that if chi is very, very large, um, epsilon 1, 2 is much greater than 1 half epsilon 1, epsilon 1, 1 plus epsilon 2, 2. So if chi is low, it's saying that these interactions are not that unfavorable. So n is proportional to, or inverse proportional 1 over t. So low values of chi, high temperature, we should be in the mixed state here. Uh, here, inside uh, this curve, we are in the demixed state. And we could, again, see that from these free energy curves. So my free energy curve is here. It's all concave up. Everything is low. There's no points of inflection. There's no common tangents. I know that I'm working with a, a material that is mixed. I'm at, in that mixing curve, that free energy curve, I'm at my lowest state. If I see, again, these points of inflections here, where the curvature changes from positive to negative, I know I have a common tangent, and that's going to give you a hint on what we're going to be searching for today. And thus, I'm going to have a phase-separated region. So um, just wanted to give that uh, for information. So one of the things that you will see today, uh, a lot of times you'll see a phase diagram, so XB is equivalent to 5B, you'll see a phase diagram like this, where they use these two lines. So here, above high temperature, we're in our mixed state, and here, we're both in, we're still in a demixed state for both of these curves, but you'll see a curve that's called the binodal and a curve called the spinodal. So we're going to kind of see when, uh, how does that correlate and what are we looking for? How do we find basically these points for a given temperature or a given cayenne? Where do we find location of these points in terms of our free energy equation? So let's go and look how we can define that mathematically. So uh, we can figure out and we could draw the full phase diagram uh, by finding kind of these points where we have a common tangent. So let's look at the, again, the general curve. So when we have some phase separation like this, I can find these points and where they occur in phi C by finding that common tangent. Um, so this will give us our binodal. So our binodal curves um, will give us, uh, binodal curves will give us that, uh, basically this look right here. It'll find us these points of coexistence uh, and we'll kind of talk about what it means in terms of how the material will phase separate. Will it phase separate um, kind of stably or unstably? Will it spinodally decompose or will it uh, perform nucleation and grow? So now this will be the condition. We can find the common tangent uh, and the common tangent will be, if we take the first number of slope, it'll be equal to zero. When we have a, uh, a scenario where x1 equals x2. So when my degrees of polymerization are the same, I can use this equation. We saw previously when x1 does not equal x2, when our degrees of polymerization are different or when we're mixing a solvent and a polymer, we see that my curve, actually we can show this looking right here, just decrease it. Let's increase this. I don't want to increase it that much. What was I thinking on the bounds of these equations? So look at here. Uh, and actually let me increase chi. So you can see here. Let's increase a little more. Come on. Oh, I see my common tangent. Anyway, this is going to be hard to see my common tangent. Let's just step forward one. Oh, I don't want to step forward that much. So let's go here and here, and then let's see where this flips. Ah, how about this? Yeah, <laughs> let me flip my computer instead of trying to flip the here. So let's see, 5 and 10. And then let's change our chi parameter here. So now I can see, I can see here, I have a common tangent here and here. However, the common tangent, the slope of this, you know, that connects here and here, the slope here through this point and the slope through this point is not equal to zero necessarily. So 
when you have an asymmetric system, you are not going to uh, have uh, your common tangent be equal to zero. So adjust our notes because clearly the, the point connecting here and here, that slope is not equal to zero. So instead, let's make this a little bit more general for our non-symmetric functions. Uh, our, basically, we return to this expression again, chemical equilibrium. So our slope, V2, at some point, you know, let's say this is 1 and 2, V2, 1, excuse me, is equal to, again, the delta G, oh, V2, evaluated at V2, 2. Basically, just saying again that the slope, our common tangent, is going to be equal. There's going to be some common tangent here. So again, in our system here, we could have a situation where G it could look like this, over mixed, and then mixed here. So the common tangent at one and two would be as follows. So this slope, which is definitely not zero. <laughs> so, anyways, um, so that is where we're going to find our binodal points. So you're going to see that finding this common tangent is really going to be impossible. Finding that binodal curve, unless we have a symmetric system, it's going to be really impossible to find that because for each free energy curve, you have to find mathematically where are, you know, basically the instantaneous uh, derivatives at all points along your V2 and see where they match. So unless you have a symmetric system, I'm probably not going to ask you to figure out the binodal curve. Now, we can also find out, uh, find spinodal curves and spinodal points as well. So the spinodal is, let's go here, is this kind of curve right here. Well, again, we'll see this in just a second and where it corresponds to. So if our points here, if this is my binodal right here and here, so let me actually blue to kind of correlate. So if these are me, my binodal points, my spinodal points are defined as follows. Uh, my spinodal points, uh, they determine the kinetics of phase separation, spontaneous, uh, are the inflection point. So when my free energy curve, or my free energy equation, undergoes a change in inflection, i.e. when the second derivative is equal to zero. Now I could always find my spin nodal points mathematically here. Regardless of common tangents, I know that change in inflection, when I change from concave up, so positive curvature on these sides, so from here and here, I'm positive curvature, positive curvature, negative curvature here. So in this region, my spin nodal region, what is the value of Eg? Um, the phi 2 in this region, what is the value of the second derivative of my Gibbs free energy mixing? It's less than zero, like I see here, because my curvature is concave down. Here in my binodal regions, I am phi 2 greater than zero, right here. So this is going to, uh, these regions are kind of really, really critical because it, uh, it really determines the kinetics of how we phase separate. So let's look um, at some spontaneous spinodal decomposition and some nucleation and growth. So when I'm a spinodal, right here, these are my expressions, I'm going to get spinodal decomposition, spinodal decomposition, spinodal decom. And when I'm in a locally stable, uh, again, this is kind of energy, you know, think about your energy landscape from your, hopefully from physics as a function of whatever our but you have some energy curves here. It's a Bell reaction curve, by the way. Um, if I have a ball here, am I stable in terms of energy? Yeah, because there's any fluctuation, uh, it's going to go up in energy, which is bad, so it'll roll back down. And basically, I'm not at my lowest energy state here, but I'm at kind of this metal state, metastable state. If there's a large enough fluctuation that puts me here, then I'll drop into. But if I'm at my lowest energy state here, if I'm in this concave up region, I'm stable against small fluctuations. But if I'm right here, What's going to happen to my ball if there's a little fluctuation in some parameter? Well, it's going to fall either right down into here or right down into here. So I'm in an unstable point energetically. Any little fluctuation, any small fluctuation is going to kind of instantaneously drop me into kind of a different state. And the same thing is happening with our Gibbs free energy curve. Let's look at this. So when I'm looking at here, looking at function here, and I have my common tangent. When I'm sitting, so this is my Spinodal, it's kind of blue here, blue here. This is my spinodal here. Oops, excuse me. Yeah, change it to red. Here and here. So these are my spinodal points. 
So if my ball is right here, again, let me draw up my points. Yeah, excuse me. Binodal region here, here. So if I'm in my binodal region, my ball, it's going to roll, you know, if I fluctuate, it will, if, I, if it fluctuates to the right in any composition, so phi2, if it fluctuates to the right in composition, it's going to roll back down here. If it fluctuates to the left, it's going to roll back down to this kind of stable point here. Um, so there are certain fluctuations where um, it is going to roll up the hill and actually it's going to come back down. So it's always going to want to come back to this phase separated state. Same thing over on this side as well. But look at if my ball is anywhere here. Any fluctuation, right or left, in concentration is going to drop me all the way down into, again, this phase-separated region. So I'm going to go to either here and here. And any fluctuation, so any tiny fluctuation, it instantly snaps and goes into phase-separated state. So the kinetics and how that phase separation occurs uh, will can, be, can be seen in this diagram here. Again, this is Gibbs phrase rule. This is for um, looking at it as a function of uh, basically a phase diagram like this where you have temperature and pressure. Um, typically, this will look at systems like this, where it's temperature as a function of basically volume fraction, and we keep pressures constant. So that's kind of how it goes there. But anyways, uh, let's look at some uh, nice little schematic of how this occurs. So in my binodal region, when I'm from my binodal to this binodal, just like we saw here, in this region, from in this kind of region here, this blue region, so when I'm in my binodal, but still haven't crossed over to the spinodal, the way that my system is going to evolve is via the process called nucleation and growth. Hopefully you remember that, um, again, from material science. So when I'm in the binodal, nucleation and growth. It's going to kind of occur slowly. You'll kind of slowly phase separate, and then you'll kind of form either these clusters or kind of these different processes. When you're in the spinodal region, that unstable uh, point, it will instant any fluctuation instantaneously, the entire system phase separates. And we'll look at a video uh, a little bit later on uh, in, in class, but it instantly phase separates into kind of like this almost like snake-like regions where everything again is phase separated. So you don't have like this slow process and this kind of clustering. It just instantaneously like snaps uh, into a phase separated state. So it's a really cool, it's actually, if you're interested in this, um, you can read up about my favorite professor at MIT, the Allen Kahn equation. Allen Kahn equation. So that describes a lot about, um, it's this second order, um, basically unstable phase transition uh, and the kinetic effects, and you can kind of read more about spinodal decomposition. So, um, excellent. So that's kind of how we're going to, uh, and we'll see in um, some uh, examples a little bit later on in the next video, how we're going to kind of create our phase diagram. So we have our delta G of mixing equation. So if I want to find my spinodal curve, all I'd have to do is take delta G of mixing, Take the second derivative as a function of phi2, set it equal to zero, and I can find a function that tells me, that gives me effectively my uh, a curve of my spinodal points. So we're going to find essentially, uh, and we'll find some of these uh, kind of critical points as well. So once we have that, we could solve and figure out, okay, and we have the same, uh, so this is general for x1 does not equal x2, and for x1 equals x2. We could also use the expression that, again, for a symmetric system, when x1 equals x2, we don't have to use second derivative, we could find our binodal point by just using this equation right here, the first derivative being 0, because that's when we're going to have, again, in a symmetric system, our free energy curves are going to look like this when they phase separate. Always be 0 here. It's flat. It's meant to be 0. Anyways, we'll look at critical points in the next video and then how we could start to kind of generate and create curves. So, uh, phase diagrams. So, we will see you all in the next video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and, yeah, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.